Today we're gonna to be installing an oxygen sensor in Samantha. So Samantha's running great. Everything seems to be working well. I've ran it a few times and um, there's no leaks. Nothing's really going on at all. And she runs and drives very well. I'm going to drop an oxygen sensor in the in line um, just before I take it to go get smog to try to eliminate any problems that I have at the smog shop. So here we are underneath Samantha and I'm on, the, I'm on the driver's side underneath the door for the most part. And you'll find right before the cat is the O2 sensor. Um, I'm a little concerned that it's going to be a pain in the butt to get off because it looks rusted. So um, we're going to try it and see if I can break these things loose at first and then I'll resort to uh, some penetrating lube or something next. So we'll see. Let's see, I need to go righty tighty lefty loosey. Which way is that? That way. I need to push away from me. Oh, that one came off nice. Let's see how this guy goes. Oh yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I was a little concerned about that. Uh, these are 12 millimeters, by the way. I'm super excited they came off that easy. And then you just pull your O2 sensor out. Um, and then this is connected back here a little bit farther. All right, so right here is the um, wiring, the little harness, the clip for the O2 sensor right here. Um, and so you got to push down on this tab. I was trying to do it with my thumb. I couldn't get it, so I got a screwdriver. So I'm just going to put the screwdriver in there and pry down and, and pull it apart. So that's that. And now we're just going to replace this with the new one. So this is the Bosch way of doing it. And it's actually uh, semi-confusing um, because it gives you a whole bunch of different types that there are of that they make. And then you have to find out which one works for your sensor. Um, so we found out that this one's actually a type B. So our OEM has four colors. It's got a blue, black, black, and white. The type B has is blue and it's the only blue in here so that's really what we were looking at. So the blue is a black wire and if you follow that along the black is a white wire and the white is a gray wire. So uh, just by process of elimination that leaves another white wire on this side so that, that we're going to match those up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to line these up on this end and we're going to stretch them out and I'm going to cut this one right in the middle area and then cut this one um, short as well and then tag them put the end with my clip on the end of this they also provided us with a bunch of hardware to put in the middle to make it all waterproof and tight we've cut the wires um, and now we're installing this plastic shield for the waterproofing um, first step is to separate all four and put the cap on then we are going to put these four waterproof parts over the top of each of these wires and push them down and over and that's going to bring them down inside that cap. We chose to do uh, the cap on this side and the big section on the side that has the clip only because the this has more wires on it than that side does so we'll have a little bit more wiggle room with this larger section. So what we did is we took special care of making sure that we're lining all these up. It's kind of bizarre but uh, the blacks on the old clip match up to the whites on the new, so that's funny. And then our white and gray match up and the blue and the black match up, so that's how it's laid out. Um, we're setting these all up right now so that we can just start to pull them through. And then these guys act sort of like butt connectors. Um, they unscrew on each end here. And then you're going to stick these over the wires. And then push them onto here or over the top. I kind of fray that guy out a little bit. Push it over the top and then screw it together. Which is kind of difficult. And it'll squeeze it all together. Just like so. 
Now we got to do that for all of them. All right, so now that we've got all these connections done and all the waterproofing in place, we are going to slide this down and over the top. It's a little tight. Sorry to block it with my hand. And then it just sort of goes over the top and collapses, connects in. And that's super. It's not going in there. Ah, got it. There we go. We made our, our we made our own O2 sensor. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how well it lines up. So we're gonna be putting this up here. There we go. And looks like it actually lines up pretty good, pretty well right there. So I'm gonna snap that in. There we go. And then I didn't have any more bolts or excuse me, nuts. So we're gonna use the rusty nasty ones that I took off, but they worked before. So they hopefully it'll work again. If it doesn't, I guess I'll get some new ones. All right, now let's tighten them up. Oh my. And there we go. New O2 sensor in place. So there you have it, a pretty basic install for this 1994 Toyota two-wheel drive pickup. Um, we installed that Bosch um, premium oxygen sensor and now we're gonna take the truck to go get smogged. Hopefully she passes because then I can start cutting her up and lifting her and building her into a pretty extreme off-road vehicle. If you wanna continue watching this build, hit that subscribe button and don't forget, keep crawling.